I'm meteorologist Rick Schluterman. Rain showers likely tonight and again tomorrow. How about the weekend ahead? We'll talk about that just ahead. A piece of the World Trade Center now on display in Michigan. The tribute next. Working for you. Fox 2 News at 5 starts now. Well, it's a week where the Motor City industry and the entire industry will take center stage. Both the auto show and a looming auto strike are days away. The UAW and Big Three still have a lot to hammer out and not much time until union workers walk off the job. But tonight, there are signs the UAW is making progress with at least one automaker. And Fox News, Brandon Hudson joins us live with more. And Brandon, what does the UAW say about this? Well, Taryn Roop, we didn't get a formal comment from UAW President Sean Fain on Facebook or on camera today, but to paraphrase what he said in a Reuters article, he said, it doesn't matter if it's 5 p.m. or 5 a.m., he is ready to negotiate any serious offers, and that key word being serious on any day of the week. But at this point, both sides have until Thursday at 11.59 p.m. to find some sort of an agreement, or workers like the ones here at this plant in Warren may walk off the job. Four days until the current auto workers deal expires, and it appears to be business as usual at the Stellantis plants we visited, including the one on Mountain Road in Warren. On Monday, a senior vice president from Stellantis said its subcommittee reached a tentative deal with the UAW subcommittee in a number of areas, including health and safety. The senior VP went on to say in a statement, quote, there is still a lot of work to do, but we know that Stellantis and the UAW have a shared interest in these discussions, reaching an agreement that secures the future of our employees and their families. Ford responded to our request for a statement saying in part, quote, we are committed to creating an opportunity for every UAW worker to build a great career and become a full-time permanent Ford employee with good middle-class wages and benefits. The United Auto Workers Union and Big Three Automakers have until 11.59 Thursday night to reach a tentative agreement. We've seen UAW President Sean Fain shake hands with rank and file employees while making bold moves throughout the negotiation process, like calling the automakers offers an insult and symbolically tossing them in a trash can. The UAW wants a 46% wage increase, a 32-hour work week, and a restored cost of living adjustment, among other demands. So far, the Big Three's counteroffers have included a 145 wage increase from Stellantis, a 15% combined increase from Ford, and a 10% wage jump from General Motors. Both Stellantis and GM would make Juneteenth a paid holiday. Union President Sean Fain doesn't appear to be flinching in this back and forth. His tough talk continued in a statement over the weekend. This is our generation's defining moment, and everything we do at this moment is going to affect not just the UAW, it's going to affect many workers in the working class throughout the whole spectrum. If we don't get our justice, I can guarantee you one thing, come this Thursday at midnight, um, there will be action. So you heard from Stellantis, you heard from Ford. We reached out to General Motors, but they did not get back to us by our deadline. We also tried to talk to some of the workers here at this plant in Warren. They didn't feel like talking to us on camera at this point. We expect to hear from Sean Fain on Facebook Live Wednesday at 5 p.m. I'll send it back to you in the studio. All of this is really just changing by the moment. But what about, Brandon, uh, we did hear from some workers before. I don't know if you spoke with any off camera, maybe in a different location. But did the mood amongst them, it sounded like, you know what, they're ready to go. Whatever needs to happen will happen. Yeah, so some of the workers here that we talked to off camera, some of them, it's 50-50. Some of them, they don't want to strike. Some of them are ready to strike at a moment's notice. But there's some sort of um, uneasiness, but there's also some people who are content with what's happening. They can trust the union, and they trust that the union will take care of them. Uh, but one woman we did talk to off camera, she did say that things are a bit secretive when it comes to the negotiations. Earlier, we did go to a local union post at another location and we were able to get this uh, flyer here. It is an information meeting uh, from the UAW Local 7 just to keep people in the know uh, for the next couple of days on the 12th and 13th over this crucial week. Reporting live here in Warren, I'm Brandon Hudson, Fox 2 News. All right, thanks, Brandon, for that report.
All right. Well, in the meantime, we're hearing the rain is on the way coming to Metro Detroit, and it could get pretty heavy overnight. Yeah, let's check in with Weather Authority Rich Luterman, who has a, a look at our forecast. And Rich, here we go again. Huh? Uh, yeah, the good news is no severe weather in the forecast. You can see where the rain is right now up around Saginaw, uh, close to Lansing right now, especially out around Kalamazoo. So it's been dry so far today, but later this evening, the rain is likely to ease into the area. 70 degrees for us, 63 in Saginaw. How about that? 55 up there in Marquette. Some live pictures along I-75. This is Birch Run, and you can see the wet roadways there. It'll look like that around here in another few hours. That's our forecast. We're down to 61. So tomorrow, more occasional showers. Then it turns a bit cooler Wednesday, Thursday. Sure looks nice heading into the weekend. We're going to show you that seven-day forecast coming up in 10. A bell tolls at the World Trade Center to honor the victims of the 9-11 terror attacks. Today marks 22 years since the deadliest terror attack on U.S. soil. Nearly 3,000 people were killed after four planes were hijacked by terrorists. Locally, several ceremonies are being held today honoring the victims and to make sure we never forget the horror that unfolded that day. Fox News' Ingrid Kelly joining us live from a memorial in Rochester with what's happening there. Ingrid. Well, this ceremony just started here at the Rochester Fire Department, and this right here, this is the centerpiece. It's a piece of still from the World Trade Center. On the surface, it looks like metal, but it's really a symbol of the tragedy that took place on September the 11th, 2001. Today is the first day that the steel has reached its final resting spot on the granite. This park-like setting is at the Rochester Fire Department. We received it last year from retired members from the New York Fire Department. So this is the, the welcoming home of its final place of honor here in Heroes Point. What does it mean to actually have this here on site? Well, to us, it's very special. It's symbolic of the men and women who gave their life that day and for the men and women who respond every day to go ahead and keep us safe. And to have it here in, a, in the community for people to come by, to be able to sit and think or remember or just contemplate the things that everybody does to keep us safe on a daily basis. Back out here live. This is just one of many ceremonies. My photographer Greg and I, we've been all across Metro Detroit today covering many 9 11 events, and we'll have much more coming up tonight at 6 and, of course, at fox2detroit.com. Back to you. All right, we will not forget. Thank you so much, Ingrid. More protection against COVID-19 could soon be on the way. The FDA has approved new updated boosters. The shots are made by Pfizer and Moderna and target an updated version of the Omicron variant. The CDC is expected to meet tomorrow on who should get the new shots. Millions of doses will be shipped across the country within days of the final decision by the CDC director.